Hello, welcome to Family Friday. I'm George Willett with Westport Christian Church. So glad that you guys came back to visit us again. Um, Family Fridays, this, this was a, a way that Scott and I, Scott Henderson, our children's minister and I, decided that we could present some content to families, uh, go over Bible basic stuff that, that many of you probably already know. But for some of you, it may be, it may be brand new. But it's a way to help families talk about the Bible together, to study together. And it's a way in our hearts, we're really praying that it, it gives the adults in the family, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, that opportunity to become the primary biblical teachers to the kids that God has given you into your care, because you're going to be the most effective there. Um, so today, we're going to keep going through a Genesis. We started last week. We talked about uh, the beginning of everything, how God created the universe and uh, how he used those six days of creation to create all of the environment and then fill all of that with all of creation. God is sovereign. That means God is over everything from the smallest little atom molecule all the way up to the largest star in the universe. God created everything. He created people too, Adam and Eve. And the problem with that is that sin came in, the adversary tempted and and people decided they wanted to do what they wanted to do instead of what God wanted for them. And that's the problem we all have is, is we all want to put ourselves into the throne of our own hearts and we want to decide good from bad, right from wrong. And that's called sin when we go against what God has declared good. That led to all sorts of problems, and, and we want to talk today, we're going to try to get from like around chapter 4 all the way through chapter 11. Now, I'm not going to be going through verse by verse, I'm just, again, telling the story. You guys can then go back and read that scripture and, and see how we fit into the story of God. All right, so before I begin, let's pray real quick. Father God, I come before you, I thank you again for this opportunity to be here today to just talk about your word to shine that spotlight on you. You are the sovereign Lord of all creation. You have a perfect plan. You have um, this desire for a relationship with everyone. And you've given us your word to tell us your story. So give us ears to hear. Give us a heart to, to just absorb this, to just gain what you want, but then us, let us have the will. Please give us the will to live this out in our day-to-day -day lives for our good, but for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I, I said that Adam and Eve, they, they sinned. They, they disobeyed God. They did what they wanted to do. And because of that, they had to leave what's called the Garden of Eden, that, that perfect place, that, that perfect environment that God created for them, where all of their needs were met, where they had purpose and, and joy in their lives, and, and now they're cast out. And I would like to say that that, that was all that happened, that, that is all the suffering, but we know that's not true because what happens is they leave Eden, and then they begin their family. And if you get into chapter 4 of Genesis, uh, it'll tell you that Adam and Eve started having kids. In fact, we find out later they had many, many kids. And in fact, all of us around the world are descendants of Adam and Eve. But th there's, there's two uh, young men that they talk about specifically, their sons. Out of all of them, they want to talk about this, and, and that's Cain and Abel. Now, now Cain was the, was the firstborn uh, uh, before Abel, and, and he was a, a, a worker of the soil. He grew vegetables and crops and, and then Abel comes along and when Abel grows up he becomes a keeper of the flocks he's a, a shepherd then it goes in and it talks about there, there came a day when they were giving an offering they, they were giving back to God what God had already given to them and they're doing this to honor God to to worship God to declare their love to God is the idea of, of, of doing the sacrifice and it says that, that Cain brought some of what he had grew, and Abel brought the first of his flock 
and not just the first, but the first with, with the fat. And it's really interesting because here the Bible talks about how God took great joy in the sacrifice that Abel brings, but not so much with Cain. And, and people have wondered, and there have been some scholars who say um, it's because Abel's offering was a, a blood sacrifice. And there are critics who will actually say this is an example of, of God being bloodthirsty. Now, I want you to say, I'm looking at the text, and that's not what I see. I'm just going to share with you what I see. Abel had this heart where he gave the first, the first fruits of his flock, these yearlings, these, these animals, and he didn't just give, but he also gave the fat. And this was extravagant. This was um, something that was rare and precious, and he gave his best. And Cain just gave some of what he had. He, he didn't bring to God what, what God deserves, that, that first fruit, that, that best of what we have. And Cain gets really upset about this. He, he's angry, and he's angry at his brother, and he's angry at God, and God warns him about this. If you look, you'll see that God is telling him, man, Cain, watch out. This is not going to go well, because he knows what's going to happen. And later there in that chapter, we read that Cain and his, his disobedience, his anger, his, his heart wasn't right with God because he didn't give God what God deserved, that he actually was in the field and he killed his brother Abel. You see, that sin that his mother and his father began back in the garden came out of the garden with them, and, and, it, and it lived in their sons. In fact, it, it, it lives in us. That, that nature of our flesh, that, that, that pride and that ego and that selfishness we all have. And this is why we so desperately need God. Because without him, we can't fix this. But after, after Cain kills Abel, he is um, sent out. And he has this, this curse, this mark on him. And it will follow him the rest of his days. Sin leaves an indelible mark on us. And then Genesis goes on, and, and in chapter 5, we, we see that, that there is this genealogy that goes from Adam, and then a, a third son that we talk about in the Bible, uh, a son named Seth, that is in the likeness of his father. And we go from Adam all the way down to a man named Noah, many generations after Adam. And, and it's Noah's age, it's, it's, it's the time that Noah lives in. If you keep reading the Bible, you will, you will learn that everyone that exists at that time, th th their hearts and their minds are turned to evil all the time. There's this wickedness that grows and grows and grows and overtakes everyone. And God looks down and, and, and this wickedness, this evil, this sin that grew is... Again, people turning away from God, people becoming selfish and, and looking to define for themselves what good and evil are and not being obedient to God. And God repents and, and says, man, I, I wish I'd never created and I need to do something, and he does. He picks Noah and Noah's family, his three sons, his wife, and their wives. And he says through Noah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to preserve, I'm going to keep mankind going. I'm going to pick you and your family, and this is what I need you to do. Build an ark, that this big boat. That An ark is something you put things into to save them, to preserve them, to protect them. And Noah, being a righteous man, he does. He obeys what God told him to do. And he and his family spend years and years building this, this wonderful, huge ark that God is going to save life through. He's going to cleanse evil from the earth. And when it is done and when it's complete, it's God who brings uh, one of every kind of animal. Now, now understand, this isn't every animal, it's every kind. So you've got like uh, the canine family, the dog, dingoes, hyenas, there's all sorts of things that fit into that kind. And the felines and the equines, and so it is just these family of animals that so many other breeds and types come from. They all 
go in two by two through this big door in the side of the ark. Then the rain comes. Adam and uh, Noah and his family, sorry, Noah and his family go in. And God himself shuts them in. He, he preserves them. He saves them. And the rains come and the waters come from the depths of the earth. And it covers the earth. Destroying all life that's on the earth. All of those people who have disobeyed. All of those people who have gone against the will of God. They die because of their sin, their wickedness. And then the rain stops and they spend more time on the ark and months and months go by. And, and Noah and his family are looking for uh, is there dry land. And they, they send out some birds and the first one doesn't find anything and the second and then eventually this, this dove comes back with, with a piece of vegetation. And no one knows that there's now dry land, and they prepare, and eventually the waters go down, and the, the ark comes to rest. And Noah and his family come out, and they offer uh, a sacrifice to God. And God does this wonderful thing. He makes what's called a covenant. A covenant is a promise that, that God says, I promise you this, and God will never break his promises. And he says, I will never break destroy the earth with flood ever again. And so you know that I've made this promise. I will put a rainbow in the sky. And, and that, that is why we have rainbows. They're, they're this, this sign of a promise from God. It is this beautiful promise of who God is and that he saves us and he preserves us. After that, you would think that once again that sin is done, that God has done the work he needs to do and that sin has been defeated, but there's a problem. And this is what this, this story keeps telling us is that the problem is us. Because guess what? Immediately, shortly, just after this flood, sin shows up again. N Noah gets drunk and he is in his tent and the Bible says that in his drunkenness he gets naked and his son Ham observes that nakedness. And he goes immediately, tells his brother, there's this idea that he went and perhaps did uh, this mocking tone. There was, there was a lot of research, there's a lot of, of commentary about this, but it was offensive. It was disrespectful. And because of this ongoing sin, we see that mankind still is not where we need to be. In fact, for me, it shows me how desperately I need that relationship with God because even if God externally takes care of all of these problems, the biggest problem is still there. It's my heart, my wicked heart, the fact that sin is in my flesh. I keep wanting to do what I want to do versus what God wants me to do. Then there was this, this great chapter. That, that, that kind of takes you from... Chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9 tells the story of the flood and what's going on. And then we get to chapter 10. Chapter 10 is this, this genealogy of the sons of, of Noah. And um, scholars will call it the table of nations. And I know for a lot of you that may not be interesting, but, but here's what is interesting. Is here in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis, we start hearing about these descendants of Noah. And it's important because those names of those, those sons and grandsons and great grandsons and great great grandsons are people who become tribes and then become nations. And, and throughout the rest of the Bible, you will see these people groups keep coming back into the Bible story. Also, as you will see on, on the map, the, the, these family groups spread out, and this is where all of the nations come from. This is, again, that we all are descendant from these original people, Adam and Eve, and then through them and their, their lineage through Noah and then through his lineage. And as the Bible describes this, you also see that God is kind of focusing more and more and more on a specific family, and we'll get to that next week. We will talk about 
this specific man from this line that God uses. So that's why chapter 10 is really interesting to me. But then we get into chapter 11. Chapter 11 is one of those pivot chapters for me, the more I study it. You see this, this line of, of Noah's descendants, they, they create a city called Babel. It, it, it becomes Babylon. That is a city, that is a nation, that is an empire that will take a big part of the Old Testament story. And here we see the beginnings of that empire. These people, they get together, and, and they're all from the same family. They're, they all speak the same language. And they're, they're, they're living in the shadow of the flood, and, and, and God has told them to go all over the world and fill the earth. And they don't. They disobey once again, and they stay together, and they build this great city, and then they start building this huge tower to the heavens. Now, I've read a lot of different commentaries, and, and, and they're using these, these fired bricks and mortar. They're building this powerful, strong, secure tower to, to their own pride, their own ego. They're, they're building it high, 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 high in the heavens. But also, this type of a tower, a couple of commentators said, was waterproof, as, as though they were thinking if there ever was a flood again, even though God said there wouldn't be, but they were going to build a strong tower that would keep them safe from God. That is arrogance. That is disobedience. Living in fear. And, and man, that is a message I needed to hear now during this time. That people, when we live in fear, instead of relying on God, sometimes we won't want to rely on ourselves. Boy, I hope we all hear that message. And God comes down, and there's this personal idea that, that God comes down, and, and I believe that, that this is a pre-incarnate Jesus physically coming down. He says, let us go down, the Trinity, this idea that God is one, but many, three. And he says, they will do this. And he says, okay, here's what we're going to do. He confuses the language. All of a sudden, these people who are uh, unified in, in, in their disobedience, they're unified in their, their sinfulness, their fear and their pride. They can't communicate. They all of a sudden are all speaking these different languages and, and God sends them out. He spreads them across the face of the earth. And again, I, I see that as man continually goes back into our sin, God is continually there working and trying to shepherd us in the direction he wants us to go. Maybe if we would spend more time listening to God, listening to that voice we find in his word, his will for us, and we would just obey it and do what he has asked us to do. Maybe these crises, maybe these problems in our lives, they're not going to go away, but they'll be a lot easier to deal with, in my opinion. So th that's where we're, we're going to leave it today is... is this, this problem of sin goes all the way through this part of Genesis. You keep seeing it again and again and again. And God has told this picture of how we got to this point. The inherent sinfulness of man that, that we keep being saved by God and then we keep disobeying and doing our thing and God keeps stepping in and, and shepherds us in the direction he wants us to go. And then next week we're going to talk about, again, if you will read in chapter 10 of Genesis, that family line, we come down to one man. And the rest of Genesis, from chapter 12 on, is about this man and his family, and that's Abraham. So we'll talk about him next week. And so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, if you have any questions, if you have comments, you just want to say, hey, you can, you can call us at the office, or you can send a, a, an email to us at theportoffice at gmail.com. We would love to interact with you. Uh, this story about who God is and what he is doing in our lives is so important for each and every one of us. So if you do have questions, if, you, um, if there's something that I've not talked about or there's something that you, you want to know and, and you're not sure if we're going to get to it, please, please don't hesitate to reach out and talk to us. We, we love you guys. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. But before I go... 
you can just pray with me. Father God, I, I come before you and I thank you. And, uh, Father, I, I know that we are just sprinting through this. And, and that's okay because in this we're, we're praying that you will ignite in us this fire so that we will desire above all else to, to go to your word, to read it for ourselves to use this as a tool, uh, to, to use this as a, as a help to just get into your story, to know you, to fall deeply in love with you, to accept the love you have for us, for our good, but for your glory in all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Goodbye, good night, we'll talk to you later.